what is going on everybody it is your boy john back at it again with another episode of the build so thanks for tuning in and before i say anything it's time to celebrate you guys i reached a thousand subscribers i really appreciate it there is no better feeling i love it thank you guys so much for your support thousand subscribers we are good to go so anyway now i got that done with today's episode of the build is installing a new radiator i uh i cracked mine no not on the trails at least i don't think it was on the trails i was driving home from work yesterday and started overheating took a look at the radiator and noticed it had some damage to it and it was leaking so today we have a new radiator so follow along watch this video i will teach you how to tear this jeep apart put the new radiator in, fill it full of fluid, burp it, and get back on the road, quick. So, without further ado, oh, and if you haven't hit that subscribe button, hit that subscribe button, because now I got a new goal, and we're reaching 2,000 subscribers. And let's do it before summer's over. All right, guys, let's do this. All right, so first things first, we're gonna use that guy just to pop all these little plastic clips around. And we're gonna take all these up. Everybody talks about how easy these are to break. If you take your time with them for a second and just pull it up like you're supposed to and then wedge it out, they come out perfectly fine. Should be no reason to break any, unless they're super brittle already and old. We're gonna take off the whole front end. Seems intimidating, but it's not bad at all. It's just a series of clips all the way around. Just uh, pay attention, be easy on the clips, don't break them so you can reuse them. And uh, yeah, let's get her done. In order for us to get the rest of this front end off, we have to take the plastic fender off. We don't need to take it all the way, but at least to this clip about here at this corner. So you just need a 10 mil socket for this bolt here, and then your wedge tool again to get these clips out. And that 33 is a little big, it's hard to fit in here. Just kind of give it a little yank so it pops. Be gentle, but stern at the same time. So good, we just want to get it off about there. Then, to start the bumper, reach your hand under here. And once again, I know it's kind of scary, but you just pull till she pops, just like that. We'll put the fender under that. All right, so what we did over here, I repeated over here. Now, before we get this bumper off, we need to unhook our fog lights so that that wiring harness won't rip. There she is up there, all nice and muddy. Move my face out of the way. Just a little quarter turn counterclockwise. That should pop right out. We'll do that on the other side. All right, final step to getting this front end off is now we just pull up on the clips, right there, right here, and 
what I like to do is I'll start from one side and move my way around. Okay, so I'm trying to get the right lighting for you. It's a little sunny. So next step into removing this radiator is we need to take the re radiator support bracket and this top mount off. We're gonna have to take off the hood latch and we need to unplug any wiring harnesses we see plugged in like the horns, uh, the AC line bracket. We need to get that guy off. And um, we'll just pull all these wires out of their little clips and free everything up so we can take this top half off. Um, we're also gonna have to unbolt the radiator support beams here. So let's get into it. So I have all the wiring harnesses detached from this upper plate. Um, I just need to try to figure out how to unplug this from the latch. I saw them do it in the video. They used a wedge, kind of pushed. It's not what I wanted to do, but it comes out. So be very careful with that red uh, red pin that goes through here. I don't think I broke it all the way, but I broke it a little bit. Then we just let this sit freely. And now we undo these bolts. There's 10, 10 mil bolt, bolts up on top, two on the front and one on each back. And there's some push pins holding in the washer fluid reservoir and the coolant reservoir that we need to unhook. And then, in theory, this should come right up. These radiator support beams are a 13 mil. So 10 mil up top and a 13 on these brackets here. Work smarter, not harder. All right, in order for me to get to that 10 mil bolt that's covered in mud, I need to take the uh, whole air box off. So I got the top half off, got the filter out. I just gotta pull up on these. There's these little studs sitting in there around rubber grommets. You're just gonna have to tug them a little bit. Be careful of the AC line. fastener tag to the uh, power steering hose so get this guy come around here so you can see it a little better maybe so I just take that off of the hose there she is got all that space to work and do activities Now, I should be able to get to this 10 mil bolt. Some of that dirt off of it. I have to just use the handheld for this. I mean, I could not be lazy and just put take the washer fluid reservoir out, but I'm not trying to do all that if I don't have to. 
just one bolt. I'm not gonna let it get the best of me. That bolt's coming out. As well. We got the top uh, radiator support off. Next, we're gonna wanna unplug the fan. We're gonna pull the top radiator hose and the bottom radiator hose. And I believe that the radiator is hooked in with some rubber clips um, down below on each side to separate it from the front end. You just gotta be careful of the power steering cooling lines you have to detach those from the side of the radiator as well. So, well, let's get into that now. So much mud. All you're gonna do right here is just pinch this. So pinch. It's just on one side? I don't, I mean, I'm just Looks looking like while we're doing this. I don't see anything hooked to the radiator itself. Rain is just trying to shimmy out those power steering cooling lines from their bracket. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Brandon's reaching in there to loosen up the plug. And the plug has a little red cap on it. He's got a flat head in the center to loosen it up. And there goes the coolant. So we're draining that out. Okay. Let me bottom. make sure it's going in the bucket. I capped it off. Oh yeah, it's perfectly, perfectly going in the bucket. Laura's gonna be mad about that. That's her mop bucket. <laughs> what? Yeah, we just need some pliers. All right, so we are going to take all the hoses apart, the lower radiator hose, the upper radiator hose, and the reservoir hose. Got the top hose off. Let it drain a little bit more than stuff the rag in it. Here goes the bottom one. is sitting right in there. All this is wet. Yeah. So. That's the culprit. All right, radiator is out. Uh, wasn't a bad process at all. Just gotta pay attention to what you're doing. Don't go too fast or you'll break some lines and stuff. But uh, no, everything's good. Now I gotta shove all these tools and my car components in the Jeep, lock it up, and then my buddy Brandon's gonna give me a ride down to O'Reilly's and pick up the new radiator. So, let's go. All right, got the radiator, it's right there. We got some uh, coolant right there. And uh, we should be good to go, back to the Jeep. Pretty. <laughs> All right, what are we doing, Brandon? Pulling the fan. All right, what do you got to do? There's a clippy clippy right there. Just got to push that in. I already pulled it out a little bit, so. Ow! Beef cooper. This is sharp, so watch your hands. Um, pushing that one in, pushing this one in. There we go. Bam. 
separation. This is a stock radiator. Um, I got at O'Reilly's, about 250 bucks. For now. For now. Fan installed. Boom. All right, so the Granite Grant is back together. Radiator in, and uh, it was all pretty simple. It's, the hardest thing about the whole thing was these, there's these plastic uh, brackets in here that hold your wiring harnesses together. That was the hardest thing to get back because I didn't remember how it went, and it didn't seem to want to fit right. Finally, we got it, but that was the hardest thing about the whole, whole job. So, the last step now is to fill this full of coolant, burp it, and hit the road again. So I didn't realize that the little burping plug on the radiator hose is tucked right behind the air intake. So I need to pop this back up again. All right, so she's letting her own air bubbles out a little bit and we'll let her finish doing that and uh i got the little bleeder back there i'll open that up in a minute i opened it a second ago and it was already spewing so we should be good all right guys that is a wrap for today's video i really hope i helped somebody out um, with learning how to install a radiator on the Jeep Grand Cherokee WK2. Really, nothing to it. It wasn't that bad, right? It beats spending over $1,000 at a dealership or a mechanic just to do that job. And that is what they charge because my buddy works at the dealership and I asked him ahead of time and he said, do it yourself. So, like always guys, I really appreciate you. Thank you for helping me reach 1,000 subscribers and Amazon affiliate links are in the description like on every single video if you see anything you like and you grab it I get a little kickback that just helps me continue to make content for you guys. So I really appreciate that and yes whew, Thousand subscribers man. I'm on cloud nine, but until next time guys peace